My guest on Ticket Volume is currently an IT service management principal, specifically focused on problem management. He served in roles dedicated to problem and incident management, and even built a problem process from scratch when he saw the need. He's been in IT support roles for over 20 years. Welcome to Ticket Volume, news and information for improving IT experiences, powered by Invigate. So welcome to Ticket Volume, Brian Scramstad. Hey, Matt. Happy to be here. Brian, you've got this extensive history in IT service management, and I love the story that you told about being just seeing the need for problem management and building a process from scratch. So is that how you got into problem management? How did you get into problem management? Yeah, it really started with my experience looking at tickets at the help desk and just spending a lot of time thinking about how do we reduce call volume? How do we reduce incident volume? How do we better service our end users by getting rid of these things that keep persisting over and over again? You can look at the data and you can look and see where we have calls about certain things, even simple stuff, even password resets. Why are we getting all these calls? Why do people keep calling about Outlook, is there something more that we can do? And that's how it really started for me was how do we dive into that data and what's our process for not only identifying things, but then working with our tier two and tier three teams to get it out of our environment, to make things easier for the help desk to do their job. The agents really don't want to spend all day doing the same thing over and over again. And they recognize that there's value in helping their customer at a much higher level. There's just a, an effort to provide better customer focus when you can reduce those uh, persistent calls. So that's where it really started from. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So when you start a problem process, how do you look at it? Like, how do you actually start identifying problems? Sure. So for me, it was... Just really simple. Take a couple weeks worth of data. Don't boil the ocean. We can't be boiling the ocean if we're trying to create a process that is fit for purpose. And what we want to do is I would take no more than three months worth of data. And it also depends on the call volume that you have or the incident volume that you have. Sometimes it's really just two weeks worth of data. And that's going to give you a good indicator of where you need to go. And so we, at the time, didn't have a very mature ITSM system for logging our incidents. So I dumped everything into Excel and simply just started putting together pivot tables. If you're not familiar with pivot tables, YouTube is a wonderful tool to try and figure that stuff out. And I started pivoting around on different attributes on an incident record. There's all these different fields that everybody fills in on an incident record. And it's a mountain of data that can be harvested if used correctly. So I, even as simple as the location of the caller. So if you work for a company that has multiple locations, I would start diving into that and saying, okay, why is everybody calling from Memphis? Or why is everybody calling from San Francisco or whatever your, wherever your offices are? And then start to look at it from that angle as well. So it's not just the configuration item that may be located on the incident record, although that is an obvious starting point that everybody kind of pivots on. But you, you can look at other things too. And so then I would pivot that data around and start looking at what are the top three or four things that are driving call volume. And then maybe I would look at, I would also do keyword searches on the short and long descriptions. So I'm looking for installed. That was one of my favorites, installed. And if you think about it just a little bit, how many times a day do you spend at the service desk installing software? A lot. And from a customer perspective, why am I calling the help desk to install software? Mm. If I can just request it and have it automatically pushed via the multiple tools that we have at our disposal today. The technology is there. Most companies already are paying for these things. They're already packaging software. Why aren't we just automatically just pushing it to them? And so those are some of the things that we would look for was keywords like that to improve customer satisfaction. So in the terms of problems, like reoccurring incidents over and over again, I wasn't just simply looking for 
things that are error messages or things like that. I'm looking for trends in why people are calling. Got it. And, and what other aspects, what other things can we dive into that aren't simply error messages? Yeah, yeah. So. That's a really good point because I think when we look at problem management, at least me from an outside perspective, I'm not doing problem management in my current role. I tend to think about those repetitive, right? So like it happens a thousand times, like you said, pass or reset. Happens a thousand times. Let's make this automated. Now, that's not really problem management per se, but I like that how you're looking for trends. You're looking for patterns in the experience to say, this is something that could improve. Exactly. Yeah. There's the obvious, we're getting this error message over and over mm -hmm. again. Let's try to fix that so that we don't have that again. Let's open up a problem ticket. Let's send it to our tier two, tier three teams to see if they can work with our vendor to come up with a root cause and why this is happening and those sorts of situations. But then there's the completely other side of this that are user experience problems. And that is one of the best ways I think of showing value from a help desk and from a tier two and tier three perspective. One of the things that I always wanted to partner with those next level teams because they would ask the question, why am I getting these problem records sent to us? These are user experience situations and these are the number of calls that we are getting. This is the data that I'm seeing. This is the number of calls we're getting about this user experience. We don't necessarily think about that. It's not as simple as, okay, let's make our error messages so that they actually are informative. It's more like, how do we build services to deliver a good experience? I spoke with someone recently and they said, IT is shipping stuff that's broken all the time. That's all we do basically is push out stuff that breaks. And we're just lucky if someone calls and reports it, you're taking that next step, that step above that to say, okay, what is the stuff that they're calling about on a regular basis? How can we improve it? Did you ever get past Excels and pivot tables? Yeah, we did. We did get past Excel. I still find that Excel is very effective for getting going. But then we graduated with some of the team members that I worked with that understood how to use Power BI, which is incredible tool. And then when we got involved in using ServiceNow, there's performance analytics, which is a great way of continuing to collect that data. And, but th there's always a starting point. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we spend a lot of times boiling that ocean of making it look awesome first, instead of working our way into awesome. It took a long time for us to get to the point where we could say, this is the value added data. So let's go build a dashboard that shows this. And not everybody is, there's there's people out there that are really good at data analytics. And then there's some of us that need to kind of learn as we go and build those KPIs and, and have that data available to us. Once we understood what we were looking for, some of the team members were able to quickly adapt it and show those things to leaders and show this is where we have impact and this is where we need to make improvements. Nice. Yep. Identify it. Start doing the hard work. So you're looking for patterns in incident data and CI data. Talk about that a little bit. Like, how are the processes related to each other? How do they help each other? Do you find yourself partnering with the incident management team and service desk leadership? Yeah, definitely. It's extremely critical. I think one of the biggest things that can happen in my experience coming from the help desk days is you get a little, you don't really feel like the information that you're putting in an incident record is of value until somebody's using it. Mm -hmm. One of the things, if you want good data, you need to value the data. And working with your agents and showing them by doing this process, what you're saying is that the time that you're investing in documenting that ticket, correctly categorizing it, taking the time and effort to actually write all this stuff down has value and has merit because I, as problem management process lead, I am taking that data and now I'm making life better and making improvements with the data that you're creating. I think some of the worst things that we can do is just require that we enter in that information and then not, not do anything with it. I really think that is a lost opportunity on a lot of organizations. Yeah, 
Yeah, so. I agree. The value of that data, it's not something that we're great at measuring. And I think that's where a lot of problem management KPIs could come from, is like understanding the value that the incident process builds so that when a problem is solved, you can say, number one, this is saving our company so much money, or this is saving our people so much time. You know, money is time, time is money. But we don't necessarily put a price tag on that and communicate that back to the service desk and let the agents know this is worth half a million dollars to us. So let's make sure that we're documenting this properly. Yes, absolutely. And it's really um, about cost avoidance and it, number one, customer satisfaction. By identifying these things and m removing these annoyances from our environment, our customers are happy. Customers that don't have to call the help desk are generally pretty happy people because they've Either they've self-helped themselves by the knowledge articles that we have on a knowledge forum that have been created because we've done trend analysis. And the trend analysis says that these are the top five things that everyone's going to call about when they do call about. And we can't do anything about it. But at minimum, we can write a knowledge article about these things and put them on a self-help forum for our customers to read. Uh, and self-help themselves because as a culture, we are growing more and more accustomed to just Googling it and looking for a solution ourselves. So that's that's part of it. How do you know that whatever it is that you're creating for your self-help articles is of value? Are you just guessing? You use problem management, collect the data, create a problem ticket, create a knowledge article. So you're working with the knowledge team. You're working with the incident team to make sure that we're collecting good data. You're working with the CMDB team to make sure that the CIs are of value at, in the collection of the incidents. And then change. Oh my gosh, change management is such an important component to problem management. And the two are married at the hip and they don't even talk to each other. It's a typical relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about that a little bit. Like I, I know that changes are coming down the pike. Like we're planning for changes. There's a forward schedule of changes. How do you approach change as a problem manager? So there's the inflow and the outflow. Changes that don't go successful mm. have a tendency to create incidents. And it's funny because every change manager that listens to this podcast is going, changes don't cause incidents. I've heard that over and over again. And you're right something in that change caused an incident. Let's do an analysis. Let's open up a problem ticket and figure out why that incident occurred. And this gets into the other aspect of problem management, which is coming out of major incident, but a fair number of times, not every time, but a fair number of times, there's a change associated with it. It's just the nature of things. And so it's important to go back and look at that from a, a post implementation review what happened in that change process that potentially caused this was it we missed a detail we didn't test quite right there's all kinds of different things and then those should become actions as a result of the findings get documented on the problem record and then you know resolve so we don't have this again a big point in problem management is making sure that these things don't happen again. Mm -hmm. Great. That's perfect. Uh, one other quick aspect of where change and problem intersect is the recovery phase of the problem should result in a change. The change should be pointed back to the problem. Yes. All of this should be connected so that you close that loop and have that cycle complete. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Problem is a customer of change. That totally makes sense. The other way is a little bit harder. I always wish that there was a way to be pre preemptive problem management. I wish there was a way to predict if we do this change, this is what we're going to see and have those knowledge base articles ready, have the service desk like trained up on on how to respond to those incidents. Is that a pipe dream or is that, have you ever seen that go successfully? A lot of times when we have an application that's going live, there are defects known defects and some of it we are willing to live with for business reasons we're not going to slow the boat down we are going to plow ahead and we're going to put this into production and we know that these errors exist and so in some cases we create a known error record we create a knowledge article about this my idea was let's create a problem record about this and then use that maybe in conjunction with a knowledge record so that when the service desk is over here 
and they're getting incident calls related to this thing, we already know that. Maybe we can link those calls about that. And we've got, maybe we've got a workaround. Maybe it's just simply an explanation to the customer that it doesn't work. We don't have to put a whole lot of rocket science into this. It's about preparing the service desk for answering the question about this thing that you already know about. And if we glue all these things together in the tools that we have today, it makes for a good user experience. And it gives us data to show we need to get this thing fixed. So that was one aspect of preventative problem management. A second aspect of the preventative problem management is by looking at events. And if you've got a good event management process in place where you're getting alerts, that is another place that is a gold mine. So you're getting all this data from all these events and all these things that are creating incidents automatically. They may not be generating calls mm -hmm. from a customer per se, because you've got some automations in place that are fixing these things. And if you're going to the point of having developers develop fixes for things automatically, and you're creating tickets and closing tickets related to these things, you should 100% be creating problem records off of these and looking for permanent solutions. Otherwise, those band-aids become a house of cards. And I've seen this, I don't know how many times, where we start band-aiding on top of band-aiding on top of band-aiding, and that house of cards eventually falls apart and leads to a pretty significant outage. Yeah, that's so true. I'm sure people are listening and going through the trauma <laughs> inside their heads already. <laughs> So thank you, Brian. Thanks for being on. How can people connect? Where should they go to learn more? Oh, good question. There's all kinds of different resources online, YouTube. If they want to talk, they can connect to me via LinkedIn. I'm out there. So Awesome. Thanks for being on Ticket Volume. And for our audience, thanks for hitting play. I'll see you around the way. I'm your host, Matt Barron. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn as Matt Barron. Don't forget to post the review and send feedback. Subscribe to Ticket Volume on your favorite podcast platforms, and thank you for listening to Ticket Volume, a podcast powered by Invigate.